Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the light heavyweight title fight taking place between champion Tavares Cloud and challenger Gabriel Campillo. Now, let me just say, this is a unique video for me because I can't get a read on this fight. I can't predict a winner for this fight. What I encourage people to do, I'm going to talk about the fight styles. What I encourage people to do is to watch the fight because from a boxing fan perspective, this is must-see TV. The secret to Marvelous Marvin Hagler, in my opinion, was his ability to literally throw very short punches. Hagler would have his hands up, right? He was blocking your shots, and he could literally, like Timothy Bradley does, use his feet to isolate you. Then he would throw these very short punches that were very hard. Understand, if you can shorten the punch, it makes it harder for your opponent to block it, and it also speeds up your hand speed, right? And it's very hard to teach a guy to throw very hard, short punches, especially in the volume that Marvin Hagler did, because it's very hard to teach someone balance. Right? You have to throw the short punches and they have to have enough leverage on them where they could hurt the other guy. So it's very rare that you saw Hagler swinging for the fences and missing guys. It was also very rare that Hagler left himself open for counters. Right, He would throw short punches, then he was able to bring his hands back. And... Because he was skillful in cutting off the ring and in pursuing his opponent, even guys like Mustafa Hampshire, who had a punch and were aggressive fighters against most, found themselves backing up against Marvin Hagler, right? So frequently when you watch these Hagler fights, he's coming forward. And even a guy like Thomas Hearns found himself up on the ropes, right? Because Hagler could walk you down, get close to you, then throw very hard, very short, very accurate, very heavy punches. That's light heavyweight champion Tavares Cloud. I don't believe you can teach punching power, right? Cloud naturally has big time punching power. And even when he opens up, he's not wild. Like Marvin Hagler, he can walk you down, doesn't have to shoot a jab to work his way in. He could literally walk you down. And like Marvin Hagler, he tends to get guys up on the ropes and he tends to throw very hard, very short punches. There's even a moment in a fight that I thought he could lose where he hurt a guy with a great chin recently, the Glenn Johnson fight. That's the one time I've seen Glenn Johnson literally stood up by a punch. It looked like Johnson was literally one or two punches away from getting stopped in that fight, such as the power of Tavares Cloud. Right now, how do you beat this style? This search and destroy short, very structured type style where guys like Marvin Hagler, they're not wild. Tavares Cloud, he's not wild. He's not up on his toes dancing around. These guys are the opposite of Manny Pacquiao, right? This is a very structured approach to guys like a Sherman Tank. He comes in, he's trying to chop you down with short power punches. Well, the way you beat the style is by breaking the structure. Think Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler. 
where he is shooting a jab, he is throwing combinations, he is using lateral movement. You have to get the Marvin Hagler type guy to literally turn, right? To, to literally go looking for you. You know, Hagler, Tavares Cloud, they're on a search and destroy mission. So you've literally got to use movement and you've got to break the structure, right? You've got to be outside their short power punches. You have to stay on the move. You have to keep them busy with the jab that they have to block. You have to throw quick combinations. You have to fight in bursts, right? Think in a different fight. Sergio Martinez against a very structured Sergio Zinzurik, right? Very hard to bum rush a Marvin Hagler. He has his defensive construct. He knows how to block shots. Very hard to bum rush a uh, Tavares Cloud. You've got to keep moving. You've got to, in the words of boxers, right, to use their vernacular, you've got to be slick. Well, let me tell you, even though he's unknown, Gabriel Campillo is slick. First of all, he is a former light heavyweight champ. He beat Babu Chumanov, who currently has one of the belts. He beat him once. Then in the rematch, quite frankly, many people at ringside thought he beat him again. Babu Chumanov himself looked puzzled when he got the decision in the rematch. Now, Campillo, it's true, got walked down earlier in his career by a fighter, Vyacheslav Yuzelkov. Let me point out, that fight is on YouTube. Look at the sixth round yourself. What you're going to see is that was a one-punch knockout, right? Campillo was actually dominating the fight using the very slickness that I'm talking about. Right, Campillo is slick. He can move. He keeps you guessing. He keeps sluggers turning. He's not in one place long enough for the slugger to catch up with him. It's very difficult to get Campillo up on the ropes. Not only is he slick, he's southpaw slick. He's a lefty. And he's tall. Tavares Cloud is 5'10". Campillo is 6'2". And knows how to play the angles. Here's the catch. Campillo only has eight knockouts. He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have anything to keep Tavares Cloud off of him. So what this fight is going to turn out to be is whether a slugger who is going to be pursuing his opponent, right? Tavares Cloud pursuing his opponent, looking for a KO. Whether Tavares Cloud can literally catch up with Gabriel Campillo, who's going to be playing the Ray Leonard role, in trying to keep him turning and in trying to make sure that he doesn't allow Cloud to walk him down. So literally, because Cloud's not blessed with a great jab, so Cloud's going to be trying to walk up to him. Campillo's going to have to stick the jab in his face and keep moving. Now, if you look at the scoring on Tavares Cloud's fights, you're going to see that even though he's a slugger, he tends to dominate the scoring. He beat both Glenn Johnson, and these are A-level light heavyweights. I know Johnson since has lost weight to participate in the 168-pound um, contest on Showtime that recently concluded. But Johnson was an A-level light heavy as was Clinton Woods. And in both of these fights, every judge had Tavares Cloud winning the fights by four rounds, right? Cloud was on his front foot, not his back foot. Even against guys like Glenn Johnson, Tavares Cloud was coming forward, right? 
these guys engaged Tavares Cloud. He even fought Zuninga, dropped him multiple times in the fight, right? Um, so Cloud actually seems to be judge friendly. Herein lies the mystery. Can the more slick Gabriel Campillo take Cloud's title while fighting Cloud on his back foot? Right? Not only that, can Campillo somehow find a way to fight on his back foot without losing a close decision as he did against Babu Shumanov in the rematch? You know, this is a fight where, quite frankly, I don't have the answer. You know, um, I'm making this video really to highlight it because boxing's like a mistress to me. And I think this is the kind of stylistic matchup that's going to make very entertaining television. Let me just say, if I had to bet on this, the one outcome I think I can safely eliminate is I do not see Campillo knocking out Tavares Cloud during the first eight rounds of this fight, right? For Campillo to win, he's going to have to be on his back foot, and he's either going to have to tire Cloud out to catch up with him late in the fight, or he's going to have to somehow find a way to win the fight by decision. Whereas Cloud could win it early, could win it late, could win it by decision. Keep in mind, three of Cloud's last four fights have actually gone to the judges. Cloud, of course, remains an unbeaten champion. So here, I don't know who's going to win this fight. I think Campillo is one of those guys, even at 33 years old. He's long in the tooth age-wise, but even at 33, I think he's one of those guys who, quite frankly, has a lot of talent, just doesn't have a lot of publicity, right? He fought Carol Morat twice. The last fight was a draw. Don't be intimidated by the draw. Understand that Carol Morat, like Campillo, is also one of these better than advertised fighters who somehow is flying right below radar. I think this fight's going to be more entertaining than any of us imagine. Um, I'm on the sidelines for this fight, but I'm expecting a pretty good fight that's going to be reminiscent, quite frankly, of Marvin Hagler against Sugar Ray Leonard straight out of the late 1980s. Let me also point out, too, if you look at the film of Tavares Cloud against Yusef Mack, and I know we remember that fight for Mack getting hit, hurt, and stopped, right? But before he gets hit, hurt, and stopped, I thought Mac was putting on a pretty good boxing exhibition, and I thought he had Tavares Cloud confused, right? I thought he was using exactly the kind of motion that needed to be used against Cloud, and I thought Cloud was being frustrated, and I thought Cloud was having a very hard time catching up to use of Mac. Now, that video is also on YouTube. I would encourage viewers to watch, let's say, rounds four, five of that Yusef Mack fight and reach your own conclusions, right? So, you know, this fight's going to be a good one. I hope you enjoy it. I'm not making a call on it. I'm on the sidelines. In fact, the only call I'm making is that Gabriel Campillo will not be able to knock out Tavares Cloud in the first eight rounds, right? That's the only call I'm making. Uh, other than that, I think this fight is up for grabs. Should be a good one to watch. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.